Today we're going to review Chapter 10, Advertising. Advertising is one of the emotional mix elements. It um, involves in a paid communication process where I'm controlling the message, I'm paying a distribution point, and I can control when and where and what that message talks about. So when we look at the product life cycle, we can look at how advertising in the introduction stage needs to be informative. It needs to tell us what the product is, what the brand is. We need to find out where we can buy it, how much it is, and what benefits it would be. During the growth and maturity stage, we need to be more persuasive. Now we're in an area with much more competition, and we need to convince people not to purchase another competitor, but buy our product, go to our gym, go to our ski resort, buy our running shoes. In the decline stage, depending on what we want to accomplish, we're either ducking out completely or perhaps we're looking to steal other people's, uh, as they're getting out of this marketplace, the declining uh, sales. Typically, though, on a whole, advertising budgets tend to be cut at this point. So what is the purpose of advertising? We want to build audiences, certainly in the introductory stage, we want to build the audience, we want to build a target, and we want to promote sales, certainly in the growth stage and the mature stage. In that aspect with advertising, it's much more sales driven. We want to influence consumers to respond positively to our products. We want them to purchase. We want to find out what that trigger is. In order to be effective, advertising needs to be relevant to that audience member, they have to see a relevance, they have to see a purpose in their life, why it makes sense. It has to be original so it can stand out, and it has to be impactful. People have to remember what takeaway that we want people to remember. So through this, we have our research idea of how do we uh, develop how do our target market, what target market is that, how do they respond, where do they look for their media messages, and then I look to create uh, the creative aspects of it, what do we want to say, and the media development, where do we want to put it, and then we actually implement our program, and then we evaluate it. So for a strategy, can that target audience be identified? Can it be described? Where do they go in terms of, and how do they respond in terms of different types of stimuli? We look at, are these our objectives sales related or communication related? Do we want them to go and buy now? Or are we looking to convey some sort of information about our product or some sort of feeling about our product? What is the budget? If our budget isn't that large, then we're certainly not going to use television because television is very um, expensive. Other types of strategy. What do we want to accomplish? Does our audience need reach or frequency? Meaning reach. Do we need to convey this message to a large number of people? Or is the message maybe a little confusing? Or is this a call to action where we need to Remind them over and over and over. Are we looking for a lot of people? Or are we looking to hit a specific person multiple times? What's our objectives? They have to be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Are they sales-related or communication-related? Once we get this smart objective, again, we're looking at advertising, but we haven't discussed tactically what type of advertising yet. We want to know what we are looking to accomplish. And remember, advertising has what's known as a lagging effect, meaning we present an ad to a consumer now, it may not initially run off and have people go to purchase, much like a sales promotion is designed to do. We're building our audience. We are creating an element of uh, feelings. Maybe we're advertising to somebody and they've just purchased that product. So there's a lagging effect before it actually drives, uh, drives purchase. We look at a creative strategy. What do we want the message to say based on our customer research? What are their wants and needs? 
If we know their wants and needs, we now know what our message needs to be presented as. We want to fit the overall strategy. We want to be appropriate for the target market. We don't want to use too much of adult theme for children or too high of a price or, or whatever that would be. We need to make sure that it's effective for that target audience. We need our advertising element to have a unique selling proposition, a USP. What one thing do we want people to remember about the brand? A unique selling proposition. Our brand, our ski resort, our gym, our running shoes, our soccer team. What one thing makes us different than our communication? What's that one takeaway? We look at different types of creative elements. We can look at a demonstration where we're showing the product in use. Maybe we're seeing people ski down our slope. Maybe we're looking for a specific one to a target audience that is a teen and young adults who are showing people go down a difficult run, doing flips, doing some of the terrain park. Or maybe we're looking at a family-friendly target audience. So to make it relevant to them, we're showing kids going down and parents together and eating together a nice pizza. We're looking perhaps at a testimonial that our spokesperson is an athlete. It provides credibility, especially if they use this practice product in their game. Baseball player uh, endorsing a type of shoes or baseball mitt certainly has a lot of credibility. Maybe we're showing a lifestyle, health and fitness. Maybe we're showing an athlete, a baseball player, but we're promoting running shoes. So we're showing them as an athlete in different aspects of it. Where they're not using this in their game, but certainly getting healthy and, and fitness for theirs. Maybe our creative element is just informational. It's an announcement. Maybe a newspaper ad in the campus newspaper showing who we're playing in a football game this Saturday, what time it is, and, and what our record is. So it's very specific in terms of the event time, parking, tickets, you know, very informational, very static. Maybe we're doing celebrity endorsements as an imitation or symbolic use of the product. So we look at a couple different strategy elements. We look at media strategy. The choice of the media vehicle is very important. We can look at you know, different types of sport organizations. We have signage either on the dasher boards or on the ice of hockey or in the outfield of baseball, on player jerseys in soccer or on a car for auto racing. We look at endorsements and sponsorships. In endorsements, we looked at that a second ago. We were looking at credibility, this expertise shown by a person, or certainly we can do that through a sponsorship. Although Wimbledon doesn't use time in terms of you know, a part of their game. Rolex has that huge sponsorship of their timepiece right behind the service area. You know, so now we're looking at not necessarily a credibility factor, but more of an attractiveness where we have this nexus, this association between Rolex as a very high prestigious timepiece and Wimbledon, a very high prestigious tennis event. And there's that similarity of our target audiences. So we look at credibility and attractiveness. We look at different types, and we'll flesh this out in a second, of print media, of electronic media, and this out-of-home media being billboards, blimps, and buses. So our print media, we have advantages for magazines. One advantage is this idea of selectivity. Selectivity has the flip side of reach. So selectivity, we have a magazine. If you're interested in running, scuba diving, triathlon, uh, whatever that would be, you have a very specific magazine or to extend it, magazine website, which creates consumer interest. It gets people specifically in that sport who are interested in that sport. It allows us then to present advertising because if you're reading a scuba diving magazine, you're interested in advertising about scuba diving, about different types of masks, different trips to go scuba diving, regulators, all that stuff. You're going to spend more time and read that because it's an interest level of yours. Magazines give us quality reproduction, creative flexibility. The pictures are very specific. We're able to do a quarter page ad, a half page ad, a full page ad. We can do scratch and sniff. We can do different things with our flexibility 
creatively we can do it. It's permeance, meaning a lot of us buy um, season-long magazines, kind of a, uh, you know, we're looking at the NBA basketball season or college basketball season beginning soon. So we'll buy a preview guide and we can look at that guide throughout the entire season. Our ads in that magazine are still good, whether people read them now or they read them a month from now. Sometimes they're very prestigious. I talked about consumer receptivity and involvement. Some disadvantages, it costs a lot for the space as well as to produce a magazine ad. You have to get the set designers and the photographers and, and everything just right. A long lead time. If you're looking for the you know Super Bowl issue or the um, swimsuit issue of Sports Illustrated, you need to have that booked well in advance. You need to start your creative elements well in advance and get those pictures going. As I said, with selectivity, you have limited reach. So if you have a scuba diving magazine, you're not getting people who aren't interested in scuba diving. We can look at newspapers, and newspapers have an extensive local penetration. Again, their website equivalents as well. If you want to get a geographic market like Syracuse, Syracuse.com run by the Syracuse Post Standard is the greatest element to connect to that audience. You have geographic selectivity, you have flexibility, you have reader involvement and acceptance. We're used to newspapers even Sunday newspapers of having a lot of ads. Newspapers are very good at creating different things for us. We can connect to the trade. If we don't have a copywriter or if we don't have the set designers to take pictures that we need in magazines, we can have the newspaper do it and they will do it. It's very cost effective. Disadvantages, it's a poor reproduction. It's that grayscale, it's dotted, the ink smudges. It has a short lifespan, as opposed to a magazine that has a long lifespan. Now we're looking at this idea that a newspaper doesn't. If we pick up a newspaper and it's from two or three days ago, even if we didn't read it, we're less inclined to read it. Even if we don't know what happened two or three days ago, we're less inclined to read it. So we look at this idea that it has a short lifespan. Television gives us great creative flexibility. We have movement now. We have sound. We have demonstration. We can get national and even international coverage. We have a potentially large reach with broadcast elements. It's very cost effective. If you want to get 100 million people, you can get the Super Bowl or the Olympics or a billion people to watch the World Cup. We have captive audiences. They're there. They're going to be inclined to watch the TV show. They're initially looking at these type of advertisements. Now, there is a paradigm shift with broadcast moving to uh, more of an Internet where the television commercials may not be as uh, apparent. But we're looking at this idea also at selectivity. We're looking at flexibility, narrow casting making it more selective. So we have broadcast, you know, some of the larger networks, but also narrow casting. If you're interested in a specific outdoor life or auto racing or, you know, all these different types of sports, home improvement, there's very specific television networks for that. Some disadvantages, very costly. Production costs, airtime costs a lot of money. It's a fleeting message. When we look at a magazine that's a couple of weeks old, we open it up, the message is still there. If we get up and, and go to the kitchen during a commercial, we can't see that commercial again. It's gone. It's a lot of clutters, a lot of limited viewer attention. A lot of us fast forward and zip and zap through commercials. Distrust and negative evaluations. We've looked at a lot of things on television and ads, and we don't trust them. We think people are just looking to sell us different things as well as a very long lead time is needed to get actors and directors and budgets and producing all this stuff. Radio advantages, very short production time and, and production and air time, very costly for that. As opposed to a television that we need to produce our commercial well in advance, I can call up a radio station, tell them that I have a 
game coming up tonight and these are the teams and you know this is the price and they can create that in a matter of minutes and in between different songs actually have the disc jockey read that ad so it's not very costly there's no lead time whatsoever disadvantages no visual a very small audience in radio um, I can't see movement I can't see what you want to be presenting to me limited listener attention we don't listen to the radio anymore the radio is on when we do things maybe we're driving and the radio is on or we're studying or working and the radio is on so even though it's on we're not really listening to it out of home media like buses billboards advantages it's a very captive audience typically we take the same bus to work or the same train back and forth from work so I can put my ad on there and get some great frequency I'm gonna get the same people over and over and over it's very captive you can't get up and leave that train to do something different very cost-effective very cheap some negatives the image is poor you know thinking about where you are in terms of uh, the mood of the audience and, and how it looks uh, you know you're on a bus and you have that you know, two feet by one feet ad and kind of wrinkled over and, and no one on the buses or a train is really happy. You're tired, you're cranky, you're going to work or from work. So you're not really in that popular and, and happy mood, much like you would be somewhere else. Compare that to a signage in a stadium. You know, you have a signage in a stadium. People are excited to be in the stadium. Wear out. If we don't replace that ad a lot, people get tired, even angry at that ad because we see it all the time and every time so there's some advantages and disadvantages of all these different types of media LED signage at a stadium certainly has been revolutionary that we can see movement and bright colors and sound and portability I really don't have any inventory here if I want to create a new ad for somebody I just type it in and we can get a new ad in very quickly so LED signage is, is very uh, innovative use of technology and advertising. So we look at this idea and how do we compare and contrast these different types of, of advertising pieces? One thing we can look at is cost per thousand. So we can look at the cost, how many people re re reached and divide that by thousand to compare and contrast you know, prices for television and newspaper and out of home. However, we need to really analyze this because perhaps television gives us more bang for our buck. Maybe television, because it's movement, because we can create more of an excitement, is worth more than just comparing and contrasting the numbers that we're paying for it. We can measure effectiveness through recall and recognition, where we have respondents remember an advertisement whether it's out of home or newspaper or magazine or tv or radio can they recall the product a lot of times we look at this idea and every monday after the super bowl we always see uh, espn or usa today has a best commercials newspaper article about it and they have people remembering what's what's the best commercial and it never really is most effective commercial. It really is favorite commercial. Because think about different, and even ask your friends after a game or after you know a big television show where they have new ads like the World Cup or the Olympics or the Super Bowl or the Academy Awards, and say, what's the best ad? And people describe it sometimes vaguely. I remember a few years ago there was a car ad where uh, a kid was going around trying to be Darth Vader and do different things, and the dad started the car in the driveway when the kid was in. The kid's mind was completely blown. And this one, the best ad after the Super Bowl, and people were talking about how great this ad. Yet the question that I had for my class when we talked about best ad, what was that for? What product was that for? And very few, if anybody, would remember that it was for Volkswagen. If it's best ad, shouldn't I remember who's creating it? That's what's most important to me as a marketer, that you remember that unique selling proposition, that you remember that one key takeaway, my brand name, and how you're going to use it. Recognition shows a little bit of the ad and see if you can um, remember what exactly the advertisement is.
So keys to effective advertisement, no matter what platform you use, you want to identify the brand early. You want to have people remember what that brand is, what you are selling. Be simple yet entertaining and interesting and adopt reinforcement. Have people be able to recognize and receive and engage and be involved in this ad. But you want them to remember what you're selling.